Steelers receiver Santonio Holmes comes from the muck. That's what they call the earth here, along the southeast banks of Lake Okeechobee. The lake in south central Florida is the second largest freshwater lake in America, supposedly behind only Lake Michigan. Somewhere between the glacial age and the great lake flood of 1928, when reportedly 3,000 people were killed, the soil of western Palm Beach County was left rich with so many nutrients that it's some of the most fertile soil in all of America. His mother, Patricia Brown, has worked the past quarter century in the cornfields. She caught a bus at four in the morning and, sometimes working two jobs, didn't return home until nine at night. When her firstborn was in 10th grade, after he helped to feed and look after two younger brothers, she sent him to live with her husband and his stepfather, Little Moss. Little has worked in the cane fields for 34 years now in the muck that produces one-fourth of America's sugar. He used to wake up Santonio on weekends and take him with him until one steaming day in South Georgia, the kid had his fill of his parents' fields, his parents' hard life, Bell Glade's sometimes excruciating life. No. I, went, I think I went there one summer. I think I was going into my junior year of high school or my senior year, one of those years. And I was like, oh, never again would I, I refuse to do this again. I cramped up one night, one day uh, we was working in uh, Georgia. And, uh, and I was on the, on the thing, you know, pushing the crates down, you know, helping out him. And man, my car, whole full body cramp. I mean, from head to toe. And I, I was like, you know what, Mom? This is this is not for me, Dad. Y'all can have this. After after we get back to Bell Glade, y'all y'all won't see me around here again. You know, working in no fields. I ain't doing no kind of hard labor. I'm strictly about sports and school. You know, and that's what I did from then. I told him I wasn't coming back to these fields, and that was something I vowed that I'd never do again. Census Bureau figures rank his hometown as one of America's poorest cities, and most of these folks are seasonal workers in the fields, anyways. October to May. From the muck springs sugar, brown sugar, corn, cabbage, lettuce, rice, and 30 NFL players from Glade Central Community High. Nearby rival Pahokee, whom Glade Central plays annually in what locals call the Muck Bowl, produced such pros as Pitt's Ricky Jackson and Arizona Cardinals receiver Anquan Bolden. Centennial got the best of Bolden and rival Pahokee in the Super Muck Bowl last February in Tampa. He caught passes accounting for 80 yards of the Steelers' final drive. He caught the game-winning pass on his tiptoes in the final minute. And the first Glade Central product to play in the Super Bowl not only won the game for his team, he won the MVP award. So people say all of Bell Glade smiled. Holmes tried to use the platform of Super Bowl 43 to talk about his troubled youth how he fell into a bad crowd and dealt drugs around age seven, how his point was that other kids should avoid such paths. But with a marijuana charge from the previous October, later dropped, and a couple of run-ins with the law even before he signed with the Steelers, also dismissed or rendered minor, the message was lost. And so it went for the once poor kid who chased rabbits to sell the meat for extra money, who watched his brothers for his mother, who followed an NFL path that wasn't completely without potholes. His best friend, Fred Robinson Jr., is standing outside the second house where Santonio was raised, not the one about a hundred paces away, where they say drugs attracted bullet holes and danger. Like I said, when we get out of school, it's basically like this, like every day. There's nothing to do. Yeah. We don't know where to go. Ultimately, these friends live two houses away from each other. Robinson got a Division I scholarship and a chance to escape the muck, just like Holmes, but after some admittedly bad decisions, He's back in Belle Glade, working as a guard at one of the three prisons there. You know, money was low, money was short, so, you know, like I say, eventually we just found a way to, you know, get it out. So, you know. yeah. Always, you know, refer back to, to everything that I've done, you know, as a kid growing up where I came from in Belle Glade. I even have a tattooed on my hands, you know, I have, I have Muck City, you know, so it's definitely a, you know, something that, that I'm always reminded of, you know where I came from, where I grew up, you know, just how rough it was, you know, growing up, and it's, it's right there visible to me, you know, every day. This is Chuck Finder for PostGazette.com.